This is to wrap up the lesson we had today. For your guidance, this lesson can be found on SL 2.2 of your syllabus. Uh, we are studying the informal concept that an inverse function reverses or undoes the effect of a function. An inverse function as a reflection in the line y equals x and the notation for the inverse function as given by f to the negative 1 of x. So we have here examples solving for f of x equals 10 is equivalent to finding the inverse of 10. Students should be aware that inverse function exist for one-to-one -one function. The domain of the inverse is equal to the range of the function. Let's review a while finding domain and range. So for this function, letter A, uh, the graph is here. We can say that the domain of this function, uh, x is an element of real numbers. So or you can also say that it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range of this function, uh, y is element of real number, all real. So it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. For the domain of the second uh, figure, so we can say that x can extend somewhere to the left and somewhere to the right. So we can have x element real, all real numbers, or we can say negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, it started at 0, so we have here 0, close at 0, and it can go anywhere up, so positive infinity. You can pause the video and try to find the domain and the range. Okay, let's say you're done. So we have here our domain. We have x is a set of all real numbers. So we can also say that it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then our range, y value. So these are our y values. So we started from, uh, or it's close at 1, going to positive infinity. Close at 1. Okay, for this letter E, uh, you must understand that this is a graph of rational function and it, and it has vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote. Our vertical asymptote is at x equals 3 and our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. This is y equals 0. So if we're going to get our domain, so it's going to be, you could say, set of all real numbers except when x equals 3. We can also say that our x is greater than 3 but less than uh, 3. Uh, another way of saying that is we have our interval from negative infinity until 3 union uh, 3 to positive infinity. For the range, our range is the value of y, so it's all set of y's. y is set of real numbers except when y equals 0. Or we can say it's from negative infinity until 0 up to the point um, 0 to positive infinity. So, these are ways of writing. We can write uh, uh, using element of real numbers. For letter F, uh, our range, or our domain, seems to go on and on to that side and to this side uh, periodically. This is a periodic function, a sine function actually. So, x is set of all real numbers. Uh, or we can say from negative infinity to positive infinity, but our y spans only within this value. Let's say this is one negative one, so it only spans at this point. 
so our range ah sorry that's not the way we write the range this is a real number so range uh, we have our y uh, from negative 1 to positive 1 closed okay uh, let's uh, go to the main item of today's lesson. It's about inverse function. I think some of you have uh, confusion about the use of inverse. Okay, there is such thing as inverse function. So if the function is f of x, its inverse is written this way, inverse function. Please do not confuse it with the term inverse of a number. When we say inverse of a number, let's say we have our number is 3, the inverse of that number is 1 third. Please do not confuse this also with inverse or additive inverse. Additive inverse. So let's say we have negative 3. Its additive inverse is positive 3. If we have positive 5, its additive inverse is negative 5. What we have today, class, is inverse function. How does it operate? So let's say this is our function. That's, uh, it's, uh, as I said a while ago, just like working a machine. And then you input 1. So you will have 2 times 1 plus 3. The output will be 5. Now for an inverse function, uh, this is your inverse function. It works uh, in a reverse way. Your input here will be coming from your output. So the output from the function will be put as a... Uh, will be put in this data and then you will process this, this x minus 3 or 5 minus 3 is 2 over 2 is 1. It becomes the output. So you can say in the function you have your input 1 and it goes out to be 5. This is your input here and this is your output. Now for inverse of x, your input is 5 and it comes out as 1 as the output. So this is your input and this is your output. So what does it say? Uh, the input in this function becomes the output in the other, in the inverse. And the output in the function becomes the input in the inverse. We can check that in a graph. So we have here, this is our f of x, the red, uh, the red line. And its inverse, what written as a, when written in the graph, is the blue line. You can see that um, we have here uh, 1, 5, and the entry here is 5, 1. These two functions, the red and blue, is reflected over y equals x. That's the test. If it reflects along the line y over x, and it's symmetric. Symmetric means they are of equal size. So you can see that the angle of this is the same as this angle. And anywhere here, the points are the same. Okay, equal, equal distance. So you can check that there is really an, in, uh, the blue line is the inverse of the red line, vice versa. To summarize, a one-to-one -one function f, that maps A onto B will have an inverse function that maps B onto A. If f of x equals y, then inverse of y equals x. So it's the same as saying that f of A here equals B. So you can just choose that f of 1 
f of 1 equals 6. And a way of saying this is from this point going to that point, uh, inverse of p equals a. So if you get of 6, then you have a which is 1. So we're just interchanging x and y. Let's apply the concept you have learned in problem solving. This one has been given already. So the circumference of a circle is a function of its radius, c of r equals 2 pi r, and we are asked to find the inverse of the function. So uh, just for a review, f of x equals y, and f of y equals x. So what we're saying here is, y equals 8. So, we can just substitute that y equals 8. So, here y equals 8. So, 8 equals 2 pi r. Then, the only variable that we need to solve is the r because that's the only one missing. That's the only variable we have here. So, r equals 8 over 2 pi, or we say that r equals 4 over pi, uh, 4 over pi. What does this mean? It means that when the circumference is 8, the radius is 4 over pi. To review, let us uh, again um, understand that not all functions are invertible. So only those that pass the horizontal line test will be called invertible. Means we can find its inverse function if it's invertible. So in this, the first one, is it invertible? The answer is yes. Number two, is it invertible? The answer is no, because if you do the horizontal line test, it will be having two values of y. Let's do the uh, let's do two a of exercise five g. The question is we have to state whether this function has an inverse and I should reason out. What is your answer? Yes or no? The answer is no. For what reason? Uh, there is no one value of y for every value of x. You can see here there are two values of y, so it will not pass the horizontal line test. Also with this one, uh, y equals 1, this point, it does not pass the horizontal line test. The diagram shows the function and we are asked to explain why inverse can exist. Write down some values and then construct a mapping diagram for the inverse. So for number one, does it exist? The answer is yes. Well, we are not asked whether it's existing or not. It exists. You explain why. The reason is there is one value of y for every value of x. So it passed the horizontal line test. Okay, so we're done with this. For letter B, write down the values of f of 1. So f of 1 is, you can see, f of 1 is equal to y, which is 1. f of 2 is equal to 5. Now we look for, uh, remember this class, y equals x. That's from the definition. So f of 0 would mean we're looking for uh, y equals 0. So that would mean our x equals 3. And then f inverse 2, that is from here, our answer is negative 3. We're mapping out, so we will just copy the same thing. Where this is A and B, uh, we have here 1, 2, 3, negative 3, 1, 0, 5, 2, 
so one maps out to this this to this one and then five to two okay that's the inverse of x the question now is how do we find the inverse of the function how does this function becomes this when written in its inverse form what we had a while ago is we tried to map so let's say our f of x equals 2x plus 3 so we say that we start with x so x is multiplied by 2 this is multiplication and then we add a 3 that's how it works so x is multiplied by 2 then added by 3 now to get the inverse so you're looking for this so we start from the far end here x and then we go backwards so let's say we start here x and then we go oh let's we'll start with x so we get the inverse we reverses every operation so adding three subtracting three and then going back here uh, multiplying by two would mean dividing by two and that's the end of your inverse function so you can read it from uh, right to left so you will read it as x minus 3 so let me do this f from right to left x minus 3 divided by 2 okay another way of doing this is following these steps first step is to exchange x and y so if we have here y equals 2x plus 3 then we interchange it we have x equals 2y plus 3 done with first step next step is to solve in terms of y so this must be our y equals something so it's the same as 2y equals x minus 3 but we are only solving for y so y equals x minus 3 all over 2 dividing both sides by 2 and then write this as inverse notation f of x equals x minus 3 over 2 it means the inverse of x let's try solving this in two ways so we're saying that from x is being cubed and then we subtract 2 so to get the inverse we start from this end going to the left so we have x we reverses it becomes plus 2 and then we reverse uh, cube the inverse operation of that is getting the cube root so what do we have we will have x plus 2 cube root or cube root of x plus 2 okay now doing the other way uh, doing the uh, steps step 1 step 1 exchange y and x so we have x equals y cube minus 2 step 2 solve in terms of y so we have y cube equals x plus 2 but solve only as y so getting the cube root we will be having only um, y equals cube root of x plus 2 basically the same but then we need to read uh, write our operation our annotation for inverse of x which is cube root of x plus 2 the same okay so let's solve this in two ways so our x is what happens to x
we add one right and then we cube it and then we multiply it by four isn't it then after that we add five so to get the inverse we start here we subtract five then we divide by four and then the inverse of cube is cube root and then we deduct one so let's read it from right to left so you have x minus 5 divided by 4 and then cube root of that and minus 1 okay let's do the other method so we exchange y and x so we'll have x equals 4 y plus 1 raised to 3 plus 5. Then we solve in terms of y. So we can say 4 y plus 1, the whole term, so you will not get confused, equals x minus 5. Then we do it step by step, so y plus 1, so you will not get confused, we'll do it step by step. So x minus 5 over Four. But we need only y, so we take the cube root of both sides. So I hope you understand and you have learned this in your, uh, in your uh, junior years. Otherwise, you need to really seek help because I cannot provide everything for you. Okay, this is normal lesson in uh, lower grade. So we have y plus 1 now. So the cube root of the cube is the number itself, so which is y plus 1, equals cube root of x minus 5 over 4. But we need only y. So subtracting both sides by negative 1. So property of operation, if you have problem with that, please seek help. So we have here, we are supposed to be uh, applying all those things you have learned. And I don't think you have not learned this in lower years. Baka you were sleeping when it was uh, <laughs> studied or you were absent. So cube root, so sub subtracting, if I subtract one here, so additive inverse, right? So I'll, I just have y plus 1 minus 1 is simply y. And I'll subtract 1. The 1 must be outside because this is a single term. And then you subtract 1 from it, uh, from the whole term. So this is going to be our final answer. So thank you. Uh, by the way, we need to change this to our notation, which is, yeah, okay, class? So if you have question, please don't hesitate to ask. But if your problem is basic, uh, I suggest you really need to seek help with a basic, as a basic algebra to it. Or tell me, I may give you some more exercises.